Hey guys, Thunder E here, and today I have the Red Magic 7 Pro. Now, there was a Red Magic 7 that was released about three months ago. We have a new device, and this is the Pro version of the Red Magic 7. And it's got a couple of differences uh, that come to mind. So first off, this is the see-through uh, version. I do like the look of it because you can see almost everything. Kind of shows you all the details. You can see it's got a 5,000 milliamp battery here. And, and this uses 135 watt charger, so sort of from really fast charging. Also has the IC9 cooling system built in. Uh, you also have the air intake, kind of just shows you where everything is. The Snapdragon HN1 processor, as well as a brand new fan, which is uh, 20,000 RPM max. So this is a faster fan to cool your system as much as possible. Very nice design. I want to see more of this kind of stuff with, of course, devices like this. Now, one of the big takeaways with that new fan, and you kind of hear it quickly, is the RGB lighting you can clearly see as I turn it on. Um, and you can go from like eco or to like full blast, if you will, or you can turn it off uh, directly. So now this device comes with a 6.8 inch, 120 hertz display. And you're going, wow, that's pretty nice. But if you remember, the Red Magic 7 comes with a 6.8, 165 hertz display. So why the drop in the hertz display? Now, I think this is because most games don't necessarily take advantage of anything up to even 120 and to optimize with battery life and also performance, uh, 120. Again, which is fine with me, but I just would think the Pro version will go even higher than 165 hertz, but you know what, it's cool. Now, overall, you know, it's pretty nice touch, touch responsiveness, 720, but there's a couple of things to this device. So we've got the uh, volume buttons on the right-hand side, as well as the power button, but on the top of those are two trigger buttons. These are touch sensitive triggers, 240 hertz. They're really nice, especially for your gaming sessions when you're playing Call of Duty or PUBG. You can really put that into use. And of course, you can actually change the sensitivity there. Now on the left-hand side, there is a, I call it like the game action button. So when you hit, when you hit this button, or you switch it, it takes you into the game center. Uh, the Red Magic Game Center, where you can see all your recently played games, all the games you have. You can, of course, quickly turn on the fan. Uh, you can go into your profiles, check network settings. Uh, you've got all that uh, built in there. And you've also got things like plugins, um, which is quite interesting, which is under the power base. So you go to plugin, plugin library, you've got a lot of plugins that allow you know, improve your gameplay if you, if you need it, or at least add more things to it. So things like 4D vibration, which adds more haptic feedback to it, as also aim assist, especially if you need it for, of course, the shooters. You can open up this game center within your game. That is probably one of the most impressive parts of it, and one that I truly like, because this allows you to go in and map those shoulder buttons, and when you're mapping those trigger buttons, you've got a couple of things there. You can move wherever you want. You can cre increase the touch sensitivity, uh, the vibration feedback, all that stuff in there. But you can also have performance listings. So you can see the performance of your games as you're, as you're playing. So what about the games that we definitely like to play? Which of course we start off with Call of Duty Mobile. And Call of Duty Mobile runs well at 60 frames per second. It's locked at that, nothing is wrong with it. And of course, temperatures stay really low. It's not a graphically intensive game, uh, which is fine. Now, PUBG Mobile, I ran it on both settings, Smooth Extreme and of course, um, Ultra HD Ultra. Smooth Extreme, 60 frames per second, ran really well. Uh, a lot of great performance from this device at that um, you know, setting and it just really was smooth. Plus, using the triggers really works well with a gameplay session. Now, of course, Ultra HD Ultra was at 40 frames per second. That also handled well, and the triggers also were quite responsive. So I really liked it for my shooting shooters, and I'd like to see more of that, but I would say I'd still prefer actual triggers, so as opposed to touch sensitive triggers, just because sometimes you, you probably notice my gameplay, like I'm in certain sessions and I'm tapping, and I'm not tapping at the right location, just because again, even though there are grooves, I have to go all the way down to actually hit that mark. So that's something you know to take note. Now, um, Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact was an interesting one because I played the game for about 30 minutes or so, and 
it ran at 60 frames per second. So you can definitely do it on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. You definitely need better cooling, which is what this provided. But here's the caveat also. The temperatures did not drop down as low as I would expect. So with games like PUBG and, um, and Call of Duty, I, had, I was at 96 um, degrees, 96, 97. That was fine. Other game, other, other systems, other uh, phones I've used have gone a little bit higher, but it was pretty cool. Playing um, Genshin at its highest settings at 60 frames per second, this is where I ran into like high temperatures. So for me, the temperatures really hit a high mark, uh, like 110, 111, not as high as say the iPhone, which is 117, but that kind of puts, puts the cooling into question. So I was hoping for at least low hundreds and not uh, mid hundreds, uh, you know, not 110 or so. So that is my, that's just my own concern here with the cooling. Now, it kind of begs to differ. Is there something that's different with this device as opposed to the regular um, Red, Red Magic uh, 7? Honestly, I really can't tell. I, I will say the battery life will definitely be longer because you have a 5,000 milliamp battery. But in terms of gaming performance purely, you're getting the same performance and you're getting that ability to run, of course, your games at um, you know, the highest uh, resolution and also at the best performance, they are giving me 60 frames per second on Genshin, which we know is very flawed. But that is pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions or any comments about this, let me know. If you think that, um, you know, this phone is worth it, I suggest you pick it up. They do have this nice offering here. It looks pretty cool. I like the build and I want to see more devices like this. Thunder E saying thank you and always enjoy entertainment.